should you buy the Google Pixel 8 or Samsung's Galaxy S23 FE? That decision is entirely up to you, but this video aims to show you how they compare, you know, to make your decision easier. So let's get started. It has actually been a while I did a comparison video like this one, but I'll try to make it as straightforward as possible. I have already posted a review of the Galaxy S23 FE as I used it for some time before getting the Pixel 8, so you can check out that review if you want more detailed information on how it performs. But my review of the Pixel 8 will be posted soon after this video, so you should definitely be on the lookout for that one. Now this video will be more focused on how they compare, so you can decide which best suits your use case. Also the version of the S23 FE I got here is the one with the Exynos 2200. You know, the US gets the Snapdragon version. So it's pretty much Exynos 2200 versus Tensor G3. That's what we have on the Pixel 8. Price wise, the Pixel 8 costs about $100 more than the S23 FE, starting at $699, while the S23 FE costs about $599, both for their base versions with 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. You can actually get good discounts on each of them since it's close to the end of the year, Black Friday and a few other discounts going on. So I'll have my affiliate links in the description so you get the best prices. Now for the nerds and above average consumers here are the benchmark scores. The S23 FE is significantly higher in Antutu scores when compared to the Pixel 8, which you might find disappointing for the Pixel since the Tensor G3 is supposed to be a more recent processor. On Geekbench, both phones have closer multi and single core scores. Performance wise, however, both phones actually perform great and it might come down to personal preference which you prefer based on their size and respective software experience. Now I say size because if you prefer large phones, you might want to go for the S23 FE because it's perfect for someone already used to big phones. And it's a more sizable phone at 6.4 inches. The Google Pixel 8, however, is a more compact phone. It is smaller than the Pixel 7 as Google managed to fine tune its design. 6.2 inches, 10 grams lighter than its predecessor, and about 22 grams lighter than the S23 FE. Now I love the fact that Google still maintains a compact phone factor for the Pixel 8. I would Oops, that's low battery. Now with that said, if you are coming from a bigger phone, you might need some time to get used to the smaller screen here. I'm speaking from experience, I make a lot of errors while typing with this because I'm used to larger phones. But it has not in any way made me love the Pixel 8 any less. Now as for the question of if its smaller size makes it offer a more better user experience than the S23 FE, that is up to your preference, you know, if you prefer bigger or smaller phones. The Samsung has a flatter design profile, so it's the less comfortable in the hands compared to the Pixel, which has more rounded edges. You can probably tell which is best for one-handed operation based on their size. The overall design of the S23 FE aligns it perfectly with the Samsung flagships or the A series depending on what angle you look at it from. The bezels are notably thicker, similar to the a54. If you are Bezel obsessed, you might not find it very convenient. Not that it affects user experience in any way though. The Pixel 8 has a better looking display bezel wise. Now both displays are vibrant and bright, not a problem for outdoor use, but pound for pound on the brightness, the Pixel 8 gets a significant 2000 nits in peak brightness compared to the 14-15 nits on the S23 FE. Both have a 120Hz high refresh rate display, both smooth in animations, no complaints whatsoever. In terms of build quality, the Pixel 8 has the more durable Gorilla Glass Victors, while we have Gorilla Glass 5 on the Samsung. If you are in Nigeria, note that you will get official Samsung Care here. Can't say the same for the Pixel, so if you get one, just keep that in mind when you use it. Software-wise, as of the time of this video, the Galaxy S23 FE is still on Android 13 and One UI 5.1. Android 14 and One UI 6 shouldn't be far off. The Pixel 8 is currently on Android 14 as expected and it comes down to what you prefer between the Pixel software experience and the One UI experience. This is full flagship level One UI so it doesn't have the limitations or lags of the budget One UI experience, I mean the A series. Both offer stable software experience but I like the lightness and overall feel of the Pixel software. It just has that perfect implementation of Material U. I mean, it's Google's software after all. But like I said, both will give you the smooth experience. In terms of software support, Google did the unexpected by promising 7 years of upgrades for the Pixel 8. That is support up to 121. That's a really long time. With the Samsung S23 FE, you get 4 years of upgrades, which is also great by the standards we were used to. And with Android 14 already here, you actually only have 3 OS upgrades left, which is still okay if you ask me. As for haptics, both phones are great, although the Pixel 8's haptics feels a little bit stronger. Nonetheless, they both have good haptics. In terms of heat management, only occasionally have I had the Pixel 8 heat up while charging. The Samsung manages this heat better in my experience. 
They are both 5G compatible. However, if you are in Nigeria, know that the Pixel 8 will not work with 5G unlike the S23 FE. And that is mostly due to the fact that Pixels don't actually officially launch here. So it's not something our service providers have seen enough user data to get Google to permit it. Both phones have eSIM support, but the S23 FE accepts dual SIM cards. The Pixel 8 only accepts a single SIM card. Neither have expandable storage. Now, while the S23 FE by virtue of the Exynos 2200 has higher benchmark scores with Antutu, it might interest you to know that on day-to-day -day use, you won't feel any of them lacking. But when you decide to game with any of these devices, the Pixel 8 is the better gaming device. I've subjected both of these to long sessions of gaming, and while the Pixel 8 runs a bit warmer than the Galaxy S23 FE, it performs better. It is more consistent with the performance on the games I tried, particularly Call of Duty Mobile and PUBG. Not only does it reach higher graphics and frame rate settings on both games, it also does not have any of the skips or occasional lags I experienced with the Samsung. The Pixel 8 can reach very high graphics and max frame rates on Call of Duty Mobile or on ultra frame rates with medium graphics, while on PUBG it can do HDR graphics and extreme frame rate. You can't go that high with the S23 FE. It is generally agreed that Pixels are not the best at gaming, but I'm impressed by the performance of the Pixel 8 and actually surprised that it does better than the S23 FE. Now, the only area the S23 FE felt better was its bigger display. You might find it more convenient to hold for gaming, especially if you have big hands. Now, that is not to say the S23 FE is bad for gaming. It is good enough for the casual gamer. Just a little below expectations for a flagship processor like the Exynos 2200. Comparing their battery life, they both have similar battery specifications, with the Pixel 8 slightly higher. For day-to-day -day use, the most I've gotten from Google's Pixel 8 is 6 hours of screen on time on a full day of use. With Samsung's S23 FE, I've occasionally gotten just under 7 hours. I say it edges out by at least 30 minutes. Of course, it all depends on how you use your phone. You might have different results. I believe the camera department is one area most would like to see, so let's talk about that. Aside their main and ultra-wide cameras, the S23 FE is armed with a telephoto camera which the Pixel 8 lacks, also armed with the ability to shoot 8K videos from its rear camera. The Pixel 8 on the other hand is armed with its AI tricks, the likes of Magic Eraser or Best Take which allows you to change your faces in a group photo from a couple other shots to get the perfect one. I'll say they both take great photos, but I'll let you be the judge if one does significantly better than the other in different lighting conditions. Both phones have the capacity to shoot 4K 60fps videos from both selfie and rear cameras. The S23 FE takes it further by allowing 8K 24fps from the rear camera. I've compared their 4K videos side by side, which would you say does better in different lighting conditions and with stabilization? Okay, so this is what it looks like filming 4K 30fps from the selfie camera of the Google Pixel 8 and Samsung's S23 FE. Uh, they can both do 4K 60fps from their selfie camera. On the record, my the Samsung can do 8K 24 FPS if you like to shoot that high from your phone. But uh, you let me know what the camera quality or how the camera quality from the selfie camera compares and then the microphone quality, how well it picks the sound. But they both do so far so good. Both the Galaxy S23 FE and Google Pixel 8 are great phones with performance that should meet your expectations, except for the gaming aspect where the Pixel 8 exceeded my expectations and the Samsung was just okay. If we focus on performance alone, whichever you choose between these two, you should be just fine. If you're concerned about the design of the Samsung with those bezels, I guess you'll definitely be opting for the Pixel, which is also close to perfection when it comes to its compactness. But I can't choose for you. Hopefully, this video tells you enough to make that choice. Which do you prefer and why? Now, feel free to check this way for my detailed review of the S23 FE. That's all from me. Peace.